Today, we're going to take this low-cost ESP32 and turn it into a hackable router and network extender on this episode of Hackbyte. When getting started learning Wi-Fi hacking, it's often a good idea to have a safe and legal network to practice on. Now, if you're sharing that network with someone else, they might be seriously annoyed if you start accidentally kicking them off the network. So it's a good idea to invest in something that you can practice on without getting in trouble. Now, today we're gonna show how you can use a $5 microcontroller to set up a NAT router, which will allow you to both get internet access and create a hackable Wi-Fi network that will allow you to practice techniques like brute forcing, as well as the standard techniques you might've already tried like cracking a Wi-Fi handshake. In order to follow along, you'll need an ESP32-based microcontroller, and you'll also need a computer with Python pre-installed. Once you have both, then we can get started. Okay, the project we're gonna be working on today is the ESP32 NAT router by Martin Gurr. We can take a look at the GitHub repository and see that the instructions are pretty clear here for how we're supposed to use it, uh, and if we scroll down even further, we can see it has this neat router configuration page, which allows us to connect it to another internet source and provide a network connection for any other devices that join it. So here we can also see we can either set the, uh, the SSID to something like ESP32 or testnet or hackable router or whatever. We can either set a password to make it a WPA2 network, or we can set no password to make it an open Wi-Fi network. All right, so we're going to go ahead and run this by first flashing it over with the uh, included documentation for the ESP tool. Now, the ESP tool is a really easy tool to use, very easy to install. You can just install it with pip install uh, ESP tool, and this should go ahead and allow you to flash to an ESP device. Now, we are doing this in preference to using Espresso's weird flash download tool, which I guess you can also do if you want to try it. And there's several videos on how to do this. But since I don't use a Windows computer, it was much easier for me to use the ESP tool. So, all right, you can go ahead and pip install your ESP tool. And then pretty much we just need to go ahead and download this code uh, here. And then once it's downloaded, we can open the zip file and CD into that folder and then just basically paste these instructions here. So in a terminal window, I'm going to first clear it. I'm going to CD into ESP, is it ESP? Oh. Well, let's go ahead and uh, probably downloads. CD downloads. And then the ESP tool. Mm, there's lots of different ESP related things. ESP NAT router master, that's what we're looking for. So I'm gonna copy this right here. All right, so if I ls, I can see there's all this different stuff in here now. And again, I'm basically just going to go ahead and copy and paste the instructions that were given to me from here. So let's see if, well, first we are going to need to find out um, where our ESP32 is plugged into. So I've plugged this into my computer, but I need to first find out where it is. So I'm going to use ls slash dev slash su in order to locate all the different things that are connected to my serial port. In this case, I'm going to copy this. And we're going to go up to this big, long command, which is the exact same as is documented here. It's just esptool.py, uh, chip esp32, port. And this is the one part that we have to change. So right here, we need to swap this out with the serial port that our esp32 is at. So I'm going to go ahead. As you can see, I've swapped it out for the slab USB to UART. And let's see if it works. OK, so it is connecting. It is now uploading the data to our ESP32. And when it's done with this, we should be able to see a new Wi-Fi network has been created, which is just waiting for us to connect and configure it. And uh, this will run pretty easily. If you see what looks like uh, just a, like a heartbeat that's just going and going and going, that means that for whatever reason, your ESP32 is not responding. And some people have told me that if you go ahead and spam the reset button while you are doing this, it will put it into a bootable mode. Sometimes if you hold it down, uh, hold down the reset button, it will allow you to upload uh, to certain types of ESP32 chips. So this is now 90% done. As soon as it's 100% done, then we also will be able to connect to this. 
And that's really cool because it should give us the ability to look and see whether or not anything is happening uh, and give us access to the command line interface. So first I'm going to try, let's, let's try connecting via screen. Um, we'll type in the uh, port, and then we'll also specify the baud rate, which is 115200, I believe. Let's see. Uh, and OK, we can see just like that, we have accessed the command line interface. And we can see currently it's disconnected because we haven't told it what access point to connect to. So it's not able to provide any internet. Once we've flashed this over, we can go ahead and look for a new network called ESP32 NAT router. When we select this, there shouldn't be internet available yet. So we may get some sort of error popping up telling us that there's no internet available. But if we go to the right IP address, I'll do it in a private window, we could go to 192.168.4.1. Then that should drop us into the configuration menu. Now here we can go in and change the SSID to whatever we want. So in this case, we'll change it to hack five and we can set the password to whatever we want as well. Although in this case, if we use any password less than eight characters, it will cause it to be an open network. So we can also set the uplink Wi-Fi network. And if we want to, we can make it so that this chip can communicate with a other Wi-Fi network and provide internet to any device that joins the NAT router, which obviously is pretty desirable if we want to trick someone into thinking this is a real network. So I'm going to go ahead and make the SSID, uh, let's see, um, and then the password. And of course, we'll blur that out. And once we hit select, then it will go ahead and upload those settings to the network. And uh, that will allow this little ESP32 to then connect to the internet. So we can see that was successful. Now I'll go ahead and change the SSID because I actually never sent that. Let's make it hack byte, click set, that'll send it off. And now we should have, well, for one, we should be disconnected because it's changed the SSID, but we should have a fully set up ESP32 NAT router. And that means we should be able to connect to it now and be able to actually access the internet. So once this thinks about it for a little bit, it should be able to detect the new, oh, there we go, the new HackByte network. So we'll connect to the HackByte network, and then we should be able to get a stable internet connection. Uh, let's just go to the ESP32 NAT and see, well, maybe not yet. Has it connected? No, nope, it hasn't. It hasn't even asked us for a password. Uh, oh, because it's an open network. So let's see. Yeah, it looks like we're connected now. Maybe it'll work. And just to test, we can also go to our terminal uh, and just try ping 8888. There we go. And it looks like we can actually ping Google. So if I go back, um, yeah, maybe it'll load. Maybe it won't. I, yeah, it loads. OK, and we can uh, even watch another person's uh, episode on this. And right now, we are actually, again, we're connected to the ESP32. So we are using the internet connection through there, uh, and we are not connected to our normal router. Now, obviously, this is loading pretty slowly, and you'll expect to see that since it's just a little microcontroller. But you can still stream and uh, use it for an internet connection for anything that's basic. Hi, Dave. Whoa. Welcome back there to There we go. Cool. So we can see that it, in fact, works. Now, let's take a look at the security implications of this. I'm going to go ahead and, in terminal, I'm going to sudo Wireshark. And this should open up. And since this is an open Wi-Fi network, we should be able to relatively quickly set up a uh, filter that's only looking at this particular network. So I'm going to go ahead and join this network on my phone. And what I'm looking for here is the ability to actually be able to uh, you know, access services and intercept traffic. So I'm going to go ahead and start this. and. Immediately, I can see there's all sorts of stuff here. I'm going to go ahead and just try to identify this by beacon frame. Um, but if I look around for a beacon frame, I can get rid of all these other uh, unrelated traffics to what I'm trying to do now, provided this computer doesn't crash. If I do this, click on this little arrow to expand, I'm going to use beacon frames as a filter with that selected. and that should allow us to only look at things that are beacon frames. And from there, we can identify the network that we're looking for and be able to uh, basically zero in on our target. So we're looking for, there we go, for HackBytes. So this is it. We've confirmed this is the correct 
network, I'm going to write a quick Wireshark rule by applying the transmitter address as a filter. And I'm going to use this little trick to make a filter that looks for traffic going in or out of the network, which is really handy. I'm just going to take this, copy it, add a pipe, and paste. But then I'm going to make this uh, DA as well as TA. Looks like it tried to squish it together. There you go. So that's going to make it so it's both uh, any traffic coming from the address or being sent from the address. And with this new filter, we should only be seeing traffic from our test network. And since there's no password here, we can be sure that it's not going to be encrypted because it's not using a WPA2 password. So as soon as this finishes resolving the filter, we can see it's only showing about 1% of all the traffic it's capturing now, which is good. So we're not going to see a bunch of cluttered stuff. Uh, and as I go down, we can see all this is appearing. On my phone, if I then choose to go to a website that doesn't have uh, SSL or uh, any TLS on it, I'm going to go to mydougal.com. I can go ahead and navigate to this while connected to my ESP32. And we can see very plainly in Wireshark exactly where I'm going, mydougal.com. So I have no privacy anymore. Uh, and as an attacker, I really can make it very simple to see what someone's doing. So I'm going to try to log in with a username and password. I'm going to press login, and it's going to go ahead and send the request. We can, in fact, see that request going out. And I'm going to stop the capture. And here we can see, all right, uh, if I want to try to see if I successfully intercepted that login, I'll press the magnifying glass. I'm going to look for admin, because that was the credential we're looking for. We're going to look for a string. And we're also going to go ahead and look in the packet details. So I'll press find. And this is going to search through all the different packets and see if I was able to find admin. I see it's mentioned a couple different times, um, admin at google.com. Uh, and if I keep going through, I will probably, as I go through these packets, find hypertext transfer protocol. Um, there we go. The, the login right here. We intercept a login to my Google, a uh, username, admin, uh, password, admin. So we can definitely start intercepting things that other people are doing now that we're on this ESP32 network. After setting up this ESP32 base NAT router, it's easy to get started learning advanced hacking techniques without also getting in trouble. Now, there are some notable disadvantages to using this setup if you're using it as a network extender, and that is definitely the slow network speed. You will not be able to do any extreme gaming on this thing. However, if you're doing something relatively non-intensive, you should be able to do maybe watching a YouTube video or streaming without very much difficulty. Now, of course, you can also use this for other projects, like maybe creating an IoT hub or setting up a honeypot network to catch hackers who are breaking into Wi-Fi networks in your area. That's all we have for this episode. Make sure to check out our other episodes on Hack5, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.